Hold the meeting to order. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so you want me to just go through the agenda, Dave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so minutes from previous meeting sent out. Uh, hopefully everybody had a chance to go through them. Um, anybody have any questions or? Mr. Chair, if, um, if maybe it's accepted uh, to approve the second, would you approve them with uh, an amendment on page three? Uh, the single sentence about two thirds of the way down, the sentence should read, it's desirable to have the estimated revenue fall between 98.5 to 101.5. I have no issue with that. Uh, so I move to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, updates uh, from the superintendent. All right. Thank you. Um, so real quick, I know I passed out some of these at the last meeting. We didn't have a chance to get into them. But um, uh, just to go over what we've done and what's going on this year. Um, we did our unidirectional water main flushing, hydro flushing, that just completed last Thursday, the 16th. So that's done for the season. We do that once a year um, and uh, to uh, to flush our water system. Uh, then we uh, then we have South Street water main improvements that was bid and awarded. Uh, construction will begin this season. We don't have a start date yet. Uh, engineering division is going to be overseeing that job. Uh, that project will be on South Street between Charles River Street to Chestnut Street. So about two miles of water main there we're going to replace. So uh, the contractors, K and K Construction, they were the uh, they were the little bitter. Uh, from last year, uh, calendar year 2023, the Lake Drive sewer pump station, that project's completed. Um, and uh, we didn't have any concerns or any issues over there. So we have a brand new sewer pump station there now. Um, and that was to replace the old one for those who were not here. Uh, the Route 128 I-95 Interceptor uh, along, along 128 uh, kind of runs parallel with Greendale Ave from Cheney Street, Kendrick Street area down through Valley Road up to um, up to the uh, Great Plain Ave uh, 128 interchange down there. Um, that project's underway. This is a rehab job. They're going to be lining that sewer. Um, it's got some structural concerns with it right now. So they're going to line it with a structural liner, uh, cure it in place. And um, then we're coming in to do phase two, which has uh, some upsize to the pipe and uh, some replacement uh, in that area. But um, this first phase is ongoing. I uh, expect it to be done by the fall. So that's ongoing. Um, so we have our uh, town hired contractor, A.D. Palini. We're continuing with our water service renewal and replacement program this construction season, just as we have in the past. So we're replacing services that are known lead-lined or lead gooseneck water services uh, within our distribution system. This is part of the new um, lead copper rule regulations uh, the EPA and DP have put out. and. Uh, we need to uh, have this done by 2032, but we're way ahead of the game. So um, we're working on that. Uh, staffing update, uh, again, I know. So just, uh, sorry on that one. So is that uh, services to individual homes? Yes, correct. So Water services to the home. Just uh, curious, how do you identify which homes are? Based on um, based on uh, uh, our record tie cards okay. in, our, in our files. Uh, so staffing update uh, for, for the division, we currently have four open positions, uh, one heavy equipment operator, uh, two crafts workers, and one laborer. So uh, we're actively trying to fill those and uh, get, those, uh, get those positions filled. I'm hoping one day I'll have a complete staff. <laughs> <laughs> My fingers crossed. 
Nobody has staff. Um, staff so yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> I know. Uh, our in house staff's currently working on Elizabeth Circle. Uh, we're replacing an old two inch water main that was in there that was steel, it was rusty. Uh, and uh, so we upgraded that to a six inch and added a fire hydrant to the end of that cul de sac. And um, the pipes in the ground, we're now working on connecting all the water services to those homes. So we'll have a nice, uh, nice new water main there. We have some other areas we have to take care of also that are on our list. Uh, the end of Tower Road by Mitchell would be one of them. So uh, so we'll look to get done what we can in between our water breaks. For those who've been around, we had a water break on uh, Webster Street just last week. We had another one that we were out there today on. So we're chasing emergencies first, obviously, and then going to do what we can in between. Uh, so the next thing is um, the MWRI water plant program. That work continues. I added a, um, this is strictly uh, drilling that they're doing to find out what the uh, rock conditions are way down. So uh, they have uh, three or four boreholes to do in Needham. Um, one over near Mills Field. The other one is uh, across 128 um, uh, over by Brook Road. And then um, there's a couple out, out on one, out or near 128 that they're doing. So those borings are down like three or 400 feet. So um, so they'll be out there doing that. I, do, I added the uh, their notification if anybody was interested in reading it. And then it's a uh, kudos to uh, the Water Division staff and PPW. Um, on May 9th, we received uh, some accolades and citations and awards uh, for our public drinking water system, which was nice. So Commonwealth of Mass um, gave us one. The governor gave us a citation signed by Governor Healy and Lieutenant, and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll in recognition of our water service compliance awards. So uh, that was nice to receive. We also got on that same day, uh, one from the DP and, uh, and the drinking water program again, for outstanding performance and achievement in the large and medium community system water category. So we got that, and then uh, we got one from our uh, local reps, um, Rebecca Roush and uh, Denise Garlick. Uh, I want to thank them too. So uh, they gave us one for um, for our awards and our water system compliance and with our compliance and for the regulations that we follow and have to report on. And this goes back probably preceding five years. So that's great. Excellent. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's awesome. We're happy. I bet just thought he's gonna be sad they left now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any uh any questions on thank you. All right, Dave. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think that's from, from Imperial to you all yesterday, uh, literally 10 minutes after I finished it. Um, the, uh, the first thing was um, starting on page one that provided for you with the rates, but also the date that they were last changed, or it's a question asked to report about when the last time you changed the base of the B rates. <laughs> And uh, for the water, uh, regular water service, uh, they've never been changed since they were implemented in uh, July of 2005. So it's uh, 19 years since uh, we made a change to those. Relative to the fee for the irrigation meters, that's, uh, we did um, change those. Um, and that's, um, uh, that is coming up on 10 years since the last change to those rates. Relative to the sewer basic fee, uh, that was, of course, just back in October 22, so just about 20 months ago, was the last time that the, those were changed. Good, good comments, too. The um, uh, just one interesting thing. Uh, I was uh, reviewing, of course, uh, we have the, the surveys 
that show that Needham's rates are in the Midland um, area in terms of rate or in terms of rankings, in terms of expense. But I often hear people complain about the water bills and how high they are. And like, and you know, of course, the whole thing about the bottled water at town meeting we discussed. So I decided to do a survey. Our most expensive rate that would be irrigation at step four. Basically, the cost of a gallon of water is just under nine cents a gallon of water. Owen Spring delivered is four dollars a gallon of water. Uh, Mountain Valley with their metal container uh, bottles, uh, they're ten dollars and nine cents a gallon for um, for water. Uh, generally, an, an, another um, delivery service, Vermont Pure, they're two dollars and forty cents a gallon. But all those are delivered. So uh, even if you went to the supermarket, then generally in eastern Massachusetts, bottled water purchased, uh, you would have to go to the supermarket and purchase it when about a dollar twenty-three a gallon. Yeah. And even the store brands, the least expense you can get, uh, fifty-nine cents per gallon of water. Yeah. That's what it's really helps put into perspective. It, it does, and I think you know, ed educating when that comes up and people think that their water bill is high, right? Educating like that is probably helpful. Yes, sir. Page one, I have just a yeah. quick clarification. I just want to confirm, you said that that water quarterly basic service fee from 05 to Lepers, you said that was brand new. That That's was when we first implemented okay. it, yes. And then the going down here, the one that has July uh, 1st, 14, the, the second meters, is that primarily would that be affecting commercial or uh, businesses or is that exactly your yeah. I always say seven meters. Uh, I mean, most say uh, irrigation, and I say that sometimes, but I've learned that everybody with second meter isn't necessarily for irrigation. Some people do it for a pool, some yeah. people do it for um, some other, um, for other purposes, not clear to me, but. Have these other charges never changed? Is that why they're not available? Uh, I could not find when they last uh, were changed. Um, so um, so that's why it's not available. I, I seem to recall in the town meeting discussion that some of the excess and free cash is due to additional development fees in the town. One-time build costs, obviously, children, so it's a big portion of that. Yeah. But do we have any sense in how that would affect one-time fees for... Oh, water and sewer. No, most of these actually not associated with all the development and such. These are um, testing uh, and when uh, folks uh, are selling their property, they have to get a final reading. Not like metering a new build? There isn't a fee for that? No, we don't have a. Um, no. No. You pay a fee to get your reading, uh, but no, uh, to to change the account into someone else's name. That's no charge for that. These other charges would be less predictable, not recurring. Yeah. Maybe you subscribe to the nature, I assume. Yeah, we generate in, in a very good year um, thousands of dollars uh, from them. Uh, the, the cross connection, some of these are all uh, required by law um, and DEP regulations, such as the backflow and cross connection testing. Yeah, some of those are done uh, twice a year, so they have to be done. We probably have around, say around twelve hundred altogether, I think. So, um, so, so with that, the um, provided uh, for you a, a history of uh, total. Uh, bill consumption since 2016, which is on page five. Um, the, the one thing that uh, is very clear is that even with the, the increased number of residential housing, uh, consumption, uh, bill consumption is declining year over year. And even after Coca Cola effectively uh, closed up operations after just 2019, um, 
other than the aberration for COVID, the um, it's still a trend downward. Uh, whereas uh, with um, uh, secondary meters irrigation, you can see the volatility with that uh, in terms of uh, uh, usage that there'll be big declines and then big increases. So I'm sorry, I'm not following. Yeah. So you're saying year over year build water has declined? Yes. Okay. I'll be com comparing year to year. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, um, that uh, is um, 1,116,000 under cubic feet of water built the following year with 1 million. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I was looking at the total build water, the amount, not the consumption. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> But what uh, causes the greatest volatility is the secondary water, and of course, what wet summers have an impact. Mm -hmm. And this was a um, uh, report that just came out a few days ago. This particular yeah. So this is uh, the MWRA uh, showing Needham's use of MWRA water, and you can uh, and it, uh, you, you can see the uh, volatility. Look at that bottom right hand uh, chart, uh, the bars. And you can see volatility in terms of Needham's use of water year after year is. Uh, you know, calendar year 20 was very, very high. And then we had a significant drop in 21. Yeah. And then I should jump up again in 22. And then 20, uh, calendar year 23. And again, calendar year 23, the summer was very wet. So, and we rely um, on MWRA water uh, when demand for water is high, which is usually driven by irrigation. We also use it uh less sparingly um when uh a well is offline for maintenance and such but if you can just see the um the interesting swings and then for calendar year uh 24 year to date significant increase but again that's reflecting january february and march so there's very little um, water usage that can cause a swing. What we're really telling is in the summer months. And, and you can just see up in the top left hand corner chart where it's showing Needham's calendar year million gallons of usage, uh, the calendar 22, 23, and 24. You can see in calendar 24. Millions of gallons of water that uh, Needham used is 1,099,000. Uh, in February, down to uh, a half million gallons. Nothing in March, April, 1,047,000. So, um, and, and, and that's saying it's a 40 year to date, 45% increase over prior years. But the real telling was looking calendar year 23. In calendar year 22, uh, for May, calendar year 22, 41 million gallons. June, uh, almost 70 million gallons. 23, um, May, uh, just, uh, just under 44 million gallons of water and just under 51 million gallons of water. So, although that shot for uh, calendar year 24 shows a significant increase. It's not, it's, uh, as the year goes on, that's going to drop significantly. Unless, of course, the summer is very warm. So, um, and then uh, the same thing with uh, sewer, which is on page six, they're showing the history of. Um, uh, built consumption in how it's declined year after year. And again, focusing from 20 forward, um, with the exception of the COVID at um, the COVID uh, year, prime year COVID, it's still a trend of going downward. So, what, why is that? 
uh, because it's we fill sewer on your in in the house water usage. So if your water usage declines, the sewer. No, sorry. Why do we think overall it's declining? The um, some of its variability in, in weather, but the other fact is, is we've had a lot of new construction. And new construction is much energy more efficient. energy yeah. and water conservation efficient. Yeah. Or uh, folks have remodeled their homes, which has also contributed to um, a more um, efficient uh, uh, devices using of uh, okay. water, which is uh, contributed to that. I think some uh, certainly um, some of the practices in uh, commercial enterprises has also impacted okay. water usage. Uh, something as simple as the restaurants not it used to be standard; they always brought you out water. Yeah. Now you find more and more you if you can you usually need to request to have water, so but that reduces the conservation. These are not unique. Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. happening all yeah. throughout the country. Yeah. Electricity, too. That's one. So, uh, and then starting on uh, page uh, nine, it is just showing yeah. the bill consumption um, for the last several years by quarter. And, and we also see trends. And the important thing here is most of the water usage in um, uh, it occurs in the first two quarters. So those would be the uh, two columns to the right hand side on each uh, each page. Uh, and of course, that's because those are the warmer months and water usage always goes up during the bad months compared to the, uh, the fourth quarter billing, which is billing that's going out now. Uh, which is reflective of, of, of water usage uh, from uh, March and then April to May. That's just water usage. It tends to uh, be um, low, either in the third or fourth quarter. I know I asked last time, but in, in roughly speaking, fiscal 24 year to date, so. I uh, not good okay. in terms of. Uh, usage and I, I did provide that oh, information at the very end. Okay, so I had, I had, I had, oh, that's quite right. So, uh, if you just want to jump there now, it's actually our page. Um, I see yeah, 53. Page 53, correct. 53. Yeah, okay. So, just comparing um, from 2020 forward, this is the first six months fill in water. In building sewer. Uh, and uh, I provided for you the percentage of water that's filled in that first six months, uh, what it accounts for for the year. Um, and again, the first six months of the fiscal year is starting July and going through December. So, um, so the average is within the first six months, uh, 62%. Of the last uh, three fiscal years, uh, 23 was even higher in fiscal 23. And again, remember, fiscal 23 ended on June 30th. Um, um, uh, if fiscal 23 ends on June 30th, this would have been the water usage for fiscal 23 from um, July 1st, 22 through June, uh, through uh, December 31st. Uh, 22. Last summer was boring because every day. And then in 24, so build for the first six months is mm -hmm. uh, later. I still need to again verify, but it is down uh, significantly. That 78 uh, million gallons of water compared to the FY23 that only represents 23. Uh, eighty percent of the build water in twenty three, mm -hmm. and uh, sewer represents eighty three point seven percent of the twenty three amount. So, assuming that uh, these um, build amounts are our averages in the first six months, which is sixty two point four five percent for water, and just under uh, fifty two percent for sewer. 
that would annualize out to be 125 million gallons of water of water billing for the balance of FY24 and, um, and uh, 75 million. Um, and, and I keep saying gallons, I'm sorry, cubic feet, cubic feet, mm -hmm. 125 million cubic feet of water and 75 million cubic feet of sewer, which is running about 87% of the 23 numbers. Revenue shortfall right now, 4.6 million. Uh, right. How would that be uh, mitigated? Uh, the I realize rates would be affected for next fiscal year, but what like, is the town address uh, that? Um, if assuming it holds, so all it, equal. yes, it, it, correct. If that holds, well, there definitely will be a shortage and it will be a hit to free cash. As well as requiring the rate of rates. But the raised rates will cover forward uh, going past. So oh, yeah, I think we we talked a little bit about that the last yeah. Yes, the rate coming out of like general general fund or um, the, sh the shortfall. Well, it's it, it does yes, it they, free cash. Uh, the free, no, correct. Cash. Basically the state will penalize your uh, general fund for deficits and other funds. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so this yeah, four point six will be mitigated, right? Because you still have some of the summer months that you'll get on the tail end of the fiscal year. Um, summer months, no, because summer months. Uh, well, you have June, May, June, right? Well, what you use in June won't get. The bill won't go out the mail until July. Got it. This is money that has to be in the bank okay. on June 30th. So again, that's why those first six months of the fiscal year uh, account for so much more. Uh, so uh, jumping back to the uh, GTF. So um, and uh, so you're seeing the amount that gets billed per quarter. Uh, and I break it up by residential, commercial, uh, Coca Cola, which is uh, really irrelevant now. Um, and then I show what the percentage of um, water usage is residential versus commercial uh, on a percentage basis, still on page seven there. Then I show uh, in terms of irrigation. What of total residential build usage, what percentage of it was related to irrigation? So in, in fiscal 23 for the year, 36.5% of all the water that presidents were billed for was for irrigation purposes. So, whereas on the commercial sector, that's as surprising. Uh, it's less than fifteen point seven percent of all the water that they were billed for. Fifteen point seven percent relates to irrigation. And again, uh, that third quarter, as you see, the uh, the amounts are very low for the commercial because it's winter time. The other uh, on page eight, same uh, concept, uh, just showing the billing for sewer. Um, and again, the trend similar to uh, water. But what, what we look at is uh, those percentages build sewer as a percentage of build regular water. In other words, meaning the water going through the domestic meter, which is, which is uh, generating the sewer bill. And of course, the the reason there is a difference is first off not everybody with the uh, has sewer, so they have a domestic meter, but they don't have sewer, so that's part of the reason why it's not a hundred percent. And where you see that the percentage is lower, such as the first quarter on the far right, that's be um, that's uh, an, an interesting trend that's uh, 
that happened in the first quarter that the uh, build sewer uh, as a percentage of build water um, was less, which means that the people who do not have sewer used a lot of water. Well, I thought it isn't it the irrigation secondary meters because you don't get no, the sewer this, charge. This is, that, no, right? this is the primary meter. Oh, this is just primary. This meter. is just the primary in order to get a sense. Of, Got it. <laughs> because the irrigation would certainly have an yeah. impact, but. That tells us that those were individuals who do not have sewer, but they were using a lot of water. So they probably don't get the secondary meter because it's cheaper if you don't have to pay for sewer to use the primary meter. So, uh, and then you look at um, um, commercial sewer as a percentage of their regular uh, water use. A little more stability there. It's basically um, the, the low point, 83.3%, the high point, 90.5%. So not as great of a swing. So uh, in, in the next page, uh, just the 22 data, same information presented in the same manner. 21 data, same information, 20 data. And I just provided the uh, fiscal 19 total data, just the flow reference. The next page, uh, you, you already did see these on May 1st. These is the forecast in terms of expenditures and what uh, we're looking for. And this is how we uh, make a determination what we uh the process of identifying how much we need to raise per rate. Um and we take an average of it, uh what the out years look like that's 25, 26, and 27. We use that three year average, which is the seven million four hundred and seventy three thousand number. And um on the next page on 16 for sewer that's eleven million three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, I, I forgot how this works, but do these numbers, should they be adjusted for the year-to-date underperformance, or is that not how it works? You no, know, because these are what you budget in okay. to get your rates approved. You have to show that everything you, how many said you could spend, you have money that can generate. You can't assume, oh yes, we appropriated a million, but we're only going to spend 900000 I can't come in with a rate structure that says 900000 They want a rate structure that produces a million. Okay. So uh, at the next page, this is the recap. So, um, so um, you'll see here, sewer, $11,375,551. Again, if you turn back just that one page, you see that's the number of our average. And uh, there are other revenues that uh, that we receive that we count upon. We assume the, the fixed rate revenue of three hundred and ten thousand dollars. That was to support all of these and, and various yeah. service fees. Yeah. And then in the sewer enterprise fund budget, we also uh, appropriate the money for the uh, drains program. That's a general fund expense. So town meeting appropriates in, in an appropriate so that they appropriate uh, general fund monies, taxation to the sewer enterprise fund to offset that. So um, that's um, $800,000. An allowance for doubtful accounts, the rounding adjustment. And then we calculate, well, what would be the unit measure cost if you charge the same amount um, uh, for um, for every hundred cubic feet of use based upon the four year average. This is the four year average that I uh, discussed with the committee back on May 1st, the 88,238,500 cubic feet average, which uh, it, then it becomes a math uh, item. That would mean that for every hundred cubic feet, the charge would be $11.73. Same exercise for water, 
um, the, the, uh, the, the average appropriation assumption, $7.4 million is back on page 15. Um, the other revenue sources reduce what needs to be raised by the um, user rates, 740,000 doubtful accounts, rounding investment, the four year average of 137 million, uh, 892,900 gallons uh, cubic feet of, of water. Math equation that would mean the unit cost would be four dollars and ninety two cents per hundred cubic feet. Did you house a bad debt expense down for account? You know, the uncollectible account percentages been compared to the COVID years. They've been holding steady, or yeah, it's been basically the same. Um, the same amount. There hasn't been because we do have the ability to lean. Yeah. The, um, doubtful accounts. I would say. I would say more than half of this is probably abatements because of accidental releases of water. So it got filled, but then the board, uh, the select board, um, based upon recommendation, would abate, uh, particularly in the sewer charges, for instance. And then there's some write it off. There's every now and then bankruptcies where um, uh, we're, uh, we're unable. So, um, uh, so it, it's, it's a very favorable uh, update. Out. The uh, those uh, numbers again, they uh, for water, uh, the four year averages. It's based on chart that appears on page eighteen. The in the four year average, two thousand twenty six to uh, two thousand twenty three. And of course, there are two. Um, there are two measures I have to focus on. The water use, build water usage through the domestic meters or the primary meter, and build water usage through the second meter. And it's important to follow those because they're different rate structures in terms of calculations. And then the next page, the same thing on the screen. Let's go to the fun part. So, mm -hmm. That's the basis of it. So we know what it is our target to, to meet revenue, and we know how we're calculating what each step rate is going to generate based upon. Uh, and then looking at the sewer, for instance, just uh, it's the same the water that thirty point nine percent of filled sewer is at the step one rate, forty eight point nine is at the step two, five percent is at the step three. And then 15%, 15.1% is at the top step. So with that, we look uh, right here, uh, very uh, first uh, page, we're looking at the current rate structure for water, domestic and sewer. And based upon that four year average, it would generate uh, a total of $6.7 million. Our target is $6,789,000. Uh, this rate structure produces a shortfall of uh, just under $87,000. Remember, we look, we always go by ranges. We want our, estimate, uh, our estimated rate structure to produce something that falls within 98.5 to 101.5. So the current rate structure works based upon that estimate. Then we look at, um, but just to clarify, sure. I realized that also in fiscal 24 year to date is not really considered this. So no, it's, this it's, is it's, understanding the real reality, probably. Okay, sure. The uh, the next uh, concept was to raise all the rates by 2.23. Oh, like that percentage come down. Well, if you go back. To page 17. I'm sorry. I think we're, that's an important point, right? So, as we're thinking about where we go with this, kind of the reality of the existing situation should be mm -hmm. yeah, something yes, that we're yes. considering versus, oh, this meets 
really doesn't. So it's good, good point. Right. Can I add one, one more quick? The four dollars and ninety two cent flat rate. That's the five dollars from. It's just that's the actual. I know it says on page one. No, no, that would be the charge per hundred cubic feet of water usage if we filled everybody at the same time. Ah, I see. Okay. In other words, we didn't have step rates. Understood. Thank yeah. you. So that's how I make the yeah, discriminated cost. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, the 2.23, what I'm comparing is what our, our target of our generating revenue for FY25, 6789000 That's the blue line. Mm -hmm. Compared to this fiscal year, fiscal 24 that we are in, which we were looking to generate 6,641,000, the difference being a 2.23% increase. And right above that, you'll see the sewer, which is a 6.17% increase. So we'll go back to the rate structure tables. So the 2.23% uh, increase across the, uh, the board on all the rates would um, generate uh, $6,850,000 or um, uh, generating a surplus of $61,000 or um, basically 100.9% of the target. Also okay. Water um, water option three, this was not touching the domestic meter at all, just increasing the irrigation rates uh, by 3%. Also produces a, a small surplus, just under 1,500, 100% of target. Okay. However, the volatility with irrigation is if it's a great dry year, this would be good. If it's a wet year, we have a big, we have a big problem. Uh, option four, this is the one we're looking at. Well, what about just adjusting the basic fee? If we were to adjust the basic fee, which is $15 a quarter, we were to increase it by $4 for the year. So basically, you'd go from paying $60 a year basic fee for, for domestic water. Uh, you would pay uh, sixty four dollars a year. That uh, and and keep all the um, the consumption rates the same. That would produce six point seven million dollars of shortfall of just under twenty seven thousand dollars. Also within the range ninety nine point six. And then the last option is. Um, uh, uh, consideration is keeping this keeping the rates all the same except for eliminating the subsidy this uh for step three uh, again what's the subsidy that's the rate that you're paying versus what the flat rate would be which we know would be four dollars and 92 cents so we would increase the step three rate from four dollars and 43 cents that it is currently the four dollars and ninety-two cents. So there's no subsidy at that step, and that's the only thing that would change. In that case, it would generate six million seven twenty-five thousand, a shortfall of uh, uh, sixty-three thousand uh, dollars, ninety-nine point one percent. So five different concepts, including our current rate structures, based upon. Uh, these averages. Do you, know, you, you know offhand increasing the annual service fee by five dollars? I'm just curiosity. What the Oh, the uh, five dollars. Yeah, another yeah. dollar. Yeah. Uh, going to uh, five dollars, we would uh, go from uh, sixty. Um, it would generate another fifteen thousand. Do you have data around what percentage of households fall within each step? Like what percentage actually gets to step three and what percent gets to step four? I uh, We do, and I forgot to include that. I'll make sure I have that next time. Okay. But um, very few 
ever get to step four, the ones you get to step four of the calendars. Um, many, um, I would say, I think it's in the 60% range or uh, step two or lower. Isn't that what 18 is? Page 18? That is the student This is consumption. But I don't think it tells you the percentage of households that get to that. Yes, yeah, the, the percentage of that, that's the percentage of volume that got built. That's first step. step at yeah. each step. Yes, that's but that's not telling you the number of households of volume. Yeah. But I do have that data. Okay. I, I just forgot to improve it. They don't want to come back again to the yeah. fixed rate. Do you have a sense how that sixty dollars for the water system? I think there's other nearby towns. Uh, I I do. Um, the we're right in the middle again. Some communities have a high uh, basic service fee, and then there's others that have none at all. So it's kind of the ask maybe to look at a model where we increase that service fee. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been adjusted in nearly yeah. 20 years. Yeah. And that's the most predictable form of the rate increase. Yeah. It is. yeah it is. Uh, Whether there's consumption or not, we do so have, and this is partly why yeah. there's houses that are all over the course of the year may not get ever get in step three because we have people that we have a segment of the population don't don't have the percentage to go south for the winter. Mm -hmm. And they have little or no use of water. Yeah. That's where the fixed fee is helpful. Yeah. And we have a group that spends time on the Cape during the summer, and hence their water usage is not as great as it would yeah. be. So, um, and so that's some dynamics that a Lexington, a Wellesley, and a Needham C, that a Framingham, mm -hmm. and a Natick uh, don't see. Yeah, I mean, it's a good consideration. It's regressive. Yeah. I don't like that part of it, but yeah. when you have dynamics like this, it... yeah, I mean, we 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 discussed those points, you know, a couple of years ago with the sewer fee as well. I mean, it is just <laughs> impact in general sense. It's kind of the way utilities in general are going in this country, and we're focusing more on fixed fees. But you're, yeah, I I agree with you know, your point. Um, and, and, and the same with the sewer base rate, is that also kind of in the middle, the $12? And the, um, I have to recheck that one. Um, I, um, I have to recheck it. There are more, to your point, in the last five years, there's been many communities that have now added a base fee. Yeah. Big. Um, so, um, so do we want to see a model where, so if you increased it, let's say a dollar twenty-five, that would generate close to the I shortfall, have, right? I would have to check. Yeah, I I, I got to run those. I mean, do we want to see that? that last year too? I thought we were talking about this last year when we looked at a couple of different we did briefly. Yeah. yeah, I thought we were yeah. like two or. Three. <clears throat> I mean, I want to ask you to, unless we think there's. I can't remember why we didn't land on. For some reason, we I'm trying to remember why we steered away from that. There was some reason because we had a couple of scenarios like that. We were in this conversation. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think year. part of it was we had increased it the year before in the sewer system, at least. Yeah. But when you have such a volatile under like demand and usage, yeah, steadily declining. Yeah. So it's a good, you want to look at a couple of cuts, but what were you thinking? See what we were saying? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to jump ahead, but. You know, to me, there's you know, the options that um, really just jump out are uh, you know, two five for water, but you know, it might not be a bad idea to. Because I, I don't like the the irrigation one again. I think that's like we've talked about before. That's kind of volatile. Um, we would have done poorly on that had we done it last year. Yeah. So with that, 
I, I was just thinking, John, in terms of I'm sorry, the uh, like the like when we're talking about looking at the fixed fees cut. Yeah, I think we probably have to look at a whole bunch of them, but I'm, I just know if you had a like particular amount outside of what's already on here, like looking at other you know, other amounts. I know you said it was like fifteen thousand difference. Like yeah, I mean, right four now. is for, for, for the water enterprise. Has it ever been kind of considered having the baby even just as out there dynamically? So of course, an even larger increase in the fee, and then that would result in allow for a decrease in the volumetric fees. Yeah. That's kind of like restructuring the rates. Do you, do you know what I mean? We, we did look at that several years ago, and um, in the end, the committee didn't feel comfortable um, moving forward uh, with that. Okay. Um, there's no reason that I can't run that matrix again and, and do it. But um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I know it's painful and going to your point of yeah. addressing this, but I mean, it's free cash is endless. Okay. Um, Feels like directionally you'd have to raise your base fee by quite a bit to make yeah. it back to the progressive rate structure. I would think. What some communities do with the large fixed fee is it usually includes the first X number of that billable is. units. Some communities okay. do that. The minimum, minimum charge. charge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I can tell you some folks um, on the conservation side don't like that model because it doesn't encourage water conservation. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so for every positive, there's also a, a, a negative. So, and it's always trying to thread that needle of what keeps the majority of folks comfortable. Do you have numbers in terms of elasticity of demand with respect to consumption with a uh, uh, percentage of rate increases? Yeah. No, uh, because volatility. Well, I mean, we've increased the irrigation rates so much, and people just keep on yeah. pumping water. It just... It's raining, and those are, I mean, no, it's, it's it started again. You know? <laughs> I would think your best proxy is the neighboring communities, because that's really the optionality people have, is to move close by. It's not to not drink water. And so, and, and that's where the major use is. And ironically, that is one of the things with uh, talking about multifamily. Um, the housing construction and doing it, its water usage is, tends to be lower. Uh, and in fact, area communities that have a large uh, amounts of multifamily, they actually meet the DEP's guidelines in having less than the average household using less than 65 gallons per person per day. Needham's uh, is not there. And the main difference is folks that live in all, the families don't have large lawns. Mm -hmm. water. Yeah, but isn't it a little different with multifamilies because you technically have one customer, which is the property owner of the building? Do you know what I mean? I thought there was some, maybe I'm thinking of other states. No, uh, even a condominium complex. You have for all building. the residents in there. It's not just one. There are some buildings that there's a single meter. There are other yeah. buildings that there's individual okay. units. And now, uh, that state law does allow, well, which state law used to not allow landlords to make the tenant pay for water and sewer. Now the law says that if you put in your separate meter service so that one tenant's not paying for another tenant, you're allowed to pass the cost on to the tenant. So that has not been a thing in Needham, but I know like in Newton and in a work line they that's expanded on many landlords have done that okay so how do we want to um how do we want to attack this so do we want to uh, maybe run through the sewer scenarios yeah. and then when's our next meeting uh next meeting will be next week okay and then the, the meeting after that is in june after Uh, I'm sorry, so the, the decision meeting is June? Yeah, June 6th, correct. Right um, uh, on the sewer, this is much more problematic. So 
current rates, we're going to generate ten million three hundred fifty-one thousand dollars. Current rates, we have a shortfall of seven hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. Ninety-two point five percent doesn't meet the target. Change all the rates by six point one seven percent. Remember that table. That's just showing how much more revenue we need to generate. That's uh, and we have a short, but we have a shortfall of hundred and just under one hundred eighty-two thousand dollars as a meeting target. It's ninety-eight point two percent. Next one, concept three, flat rate. That is the charging the same rate for everybody. Eleven dollars and seventy-three cents. We hit the target uh, at one hundred. That's arguably more aggressive, <laughs> even <laughs> increasing the base fee. <laughs> Yes, yeah. um, but but that one works. Uh, and, but that would mean for the average um, household, uh, a 9.1% increase. Uh, for option four, again, not touching the user rates, just increasing the fee by $4. Uh, doesn't meet the target, $742,000 shortfall, 92.8%. Uh, another concept is the flat rate, but not lowering any rate. So, uh, for instance, the current um, uh, the current rate for at step uh, four is twelve dollars and seventy five cents. If we just did a flat rate of eleven seventy three at each step, uh, the high end users would actually get a break, and the low end users would get a nice thing. In this concept, there would be a flat rate, but no rate would drop below, would be lowered from its current rate. In that case, that that one also actually produces a surplus of one hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars, or one hundred and one point three percent of the target. Next one, option six, is to keep. The high subsidy for uh, step one rate. So, um, and um, use the flat rate for the other steps, but not lowering any of them. So, basically, we're keeping the current $9.82 rate. We're increasing the step two rate and step three rate up to $11.73. And we're keeping the Current twelve dollars seventy five cents for the prop rate. That generates a shortfall of three hundred eighty eight thousand. Still not hitting our target ninety six point three percent. And then the last one is to increase the rates by the estimated increase in the MWRA assessment, which is really the major driver for sewer costs. You know, that's uh, for our operational costs, that's 70% of the cost of our operations. And that would be looking at um, a 6.9% increase in the rates. And uh, that would generate a shortfall, still a shortfall of $112,000. 6.9 or 6.7? The increase is six point seven because we don't touch the um the uh, the base fee. Yeah. This does not. These numbers once again split and do not count. Consider the courage for qualities. Of so, um, but with that, after going through all those options, I. Provided to you a table on um, page 26 that goes from high to low. Average single family household of 12,000 cubic feet of water, going from the rate package that has the lowest percentage impact on, in, on the household to the most expensive. Any um, under the water structure, anything that's bold means that um, the rate structure meets the uh, target range. Anything in green means 
means it reduces the most amount of money for the water rate. You have to go over to the next page before you see the first one at sewer that generates uh, enough uh, money. And that's uh, scenario 30. And if we were to keep the current water rate structure and implement um, option uh, seven, which is to increase all the rates by 6.9%, that would mean a combined annual bill would be 4.9 percent more. Um, I'm going to ask a question there, just yeah. because I'm still a little unclear. But I'll ask it a different way. Are we allowed to factor in the current shortfall into the rate? Oh yes. 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 Okay. That's yes. Yes. okay. For some reason, I wouldn't ask. Okay. But this is our methodology, and then we talked so, about the merits. Is in the current shortfall for the sewer is 4.6 million, and the current shortfall for the water system is 2.6. Yes, but those won't be the final shortfall. Right, they'll yeah. probably be a little bit better. Yes. Okay, all things equal. Okay. Dave, how did you get in sewer for the $4 increase? Last time we raised it 12 bucks a year. Where did the four dollars? Uh, no, it went from nine dollars a quarter to twelve dollars a quarter. Yeah, so uh, twelve dollars a year. Right. Well, twelve yeah, dollars, three dollars a quarter. Um, but it's now four dollars a quarter. I mean, uh, three dollars a quarter. Yes. <clears throat> but now this scenario is four dollars a year. Adding right. another four dollars. But it feels like why? Why would four dollars a year? be the scenario that we played out, not something similar to the last increase, which was 7%. Um, because I was showing the basic formula, feedback that I got from digital okay. to show that scenario. I can definitely show it's with a higher quarterly, so it should be like a buck a quarter. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly it's immaterial too. Yeah. It seems like it's like 8,000 households. Is that right? Uh, there are 8,000 households and about... <laughs> 7,400 with sewer. Okay. Yeah, that was my back of the envelope. So yeah. it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but you could come up with another 50 to 100 grand. And then the next uh, page on page 29, and just the showing the different targets uh, in terms of uh, which ones are. Um, Summarizing which each one is uh, current as is uh, for water, um, it's it, it's at ninety eight point seven percent of our target range. It's within our target range. Shortfall is eighty seven thousand. Still provides rate subsidies. Again, the rate subsidy is paying less than what the cost would be if they're being paid the same amount. At step one, two, and three. Or in other words, of saying step one, two, and three are paying less than cost. So uh, anything in pink does not work. And as you can, uh, in pink, under target range does not work. Yeah. For the sewer system, op option seven makes logical sense because it's based on assessment increases. But I am curious. 70 combined with a base increase as well. Yeah. It can do that. would be interesting to see yeah. what kind of options. Because since we know that this is a, we know the shortfall realistically is going to be larger right now, way larger than $112,000. And the town still hasn't really made it fully made up in the form of the coal lot. That's not actually uh, that, that was really all happened. put on the hold and where yeah. we are. That we have been limping along by using up the retained earnings, which in one time yeah. was in, um, almost $5 million. And now we're oh, almost wiped out. And I anticipate we won't have retained earnings next year. Um, is the town permitted, or is the rate committee as well, committed or permitted to enact a multi year rate increase? Oh, like a multi-year package, which is common. The right. committee can make a recommendation to the select board to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and yes, and we did that 
um, several years ago when we first needed to correct the um, uh, issues that we were at having is that the rates were artificially low and Coca-Cola just kept reducing its use and the town was basically where we're at now running big deficits in the funds and so there was a strive to try to keep in at work Coca-Cola stayed another 10 years and then opened up the bottling plant uh, but we had to phase in um, what eventually had to be 30 percent increases over a three-year period so, well, so I'm yes just curious like where did anybody think in the, as far as that well, i mean it's in my so my experience with the, the you know analyzing the stuff that we discussed before usually you know utilities in general and aggregate try to avoid sticker shock with a huge one you know 30 percent increase maybe a lot of sure. unhappy people um, when it, and it's known that that type of magnitude increases uh, of increase has to happen. It's preferable by practice to do that over a few years. Uh, yeah, I can see that yeah, these numbers are not. The one, uh, the one thing that is clear is we're not going to be able to keep the step one rate so yeah. low well, so, uh, and, and sewer. Um, it's just uh, that example where um, an option six for sewer that we kept, we, we didn't change the rate there, and we were still well below what we need to generate an income. It just, it's, it's a significant portion of the town and a significant portion of the billable, and it's, it's just too low. <clears throat> So that's one of the realities that we'll look at. Uh, page 30, 31, 32 is just uh, showing uh, the impact on the average, Needham's actual average. Uh, the most current data I'm working with is the calendar year 2021 from DBP, where the average is 9,094. Cubic feet of usage during the year, and it's uh, the percentage impacts are pretty well comparable. The next, which I'm not going to go through all the pages, but as uh, state, as the committee had asked, uh, if I use the four-year average, uh, because we didn't use the 2020 uh, average. Um, Last year when we did the rates, and this year I put it back in uh, the four years, and I was wondering what uh, consumption, built consumption would look like in averages if I did the same thing, right? uh, using 19 to 23, not using the 2020 data, um, which I did. And uh, not surprisingly, the consumption is higher because 19 was higher. Because I again that table consumption has been declining, so this is picking up a year that consumption was higher. But uh, the key takeaways is if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, at the rate uh, the flat rate uh, for water and the flat rate for sewer, you're looking at using the average of 2020 to 23 versus using the average of 19 to 23, not including the 2020 data. So in other words, using a four-year average in both instances. The per you, uh, the, the flat rate for sewer is 1173 um, per 100 cubic feet using 2023. It is eleven sixty three using nineteen through twenty three for ten cents less. Mm -hmm. And in the case of water, it goes from four dollars and ninety two cents to four dollars and eighty three cents. So, uh, and, and the average of them again, if you look at the page thirty four, you can see those consumption numbers for water in two thousand nineteen. Primary water 
that is the highest gear. That's how it has the impact. So, and, and I won't go through all these. All these are the same scenarios, but based upon these consumption numbers rather than these averages, rather than um, the averages that I presented to the last time. I mean, it shouldn't surprise anyone. I, I think for both of these, for the sewer and water, I think the speed increases has to, in my opinion, has to be part of the conversation for both, particularly for sewer, but I think both give us flexible and water that have been questioned 20 years um, just to mitigate some of the volatility and uh, uses, uh, which is not steady in air evidence. The other things just jump to is page uh, 49 and 50 that I've asked to show you um, um, act, uh, budget versus actual. And I actually added to the um, third column. The first thing is the rate structure that we were working to make in F for FY22, what the estimated revenue would be if that's used no target ranges and everything, the same exercise. What we had to raise based upon actual information what town meeting actually appropriated and what um, we could actually estimate. And then the third column is what we brought in, actually collected. And in 22, the um, water use revenue uh, came in below what we came in much below our target range and came in below what well, we actually had to do to balance the budget. But other water receipts uh, did come in higher. But the bottom line was it still came in under comparing um, uh, comparing budget to actual, the um, the, the actual came in at $6.9 million for expenses versus a budget of $7.7 .7 million. The um, most uh, dramatic uh, difference uh, in that is the operational cost. And that's somewhat attributable to uh, Michael's continued vacancies. Over time. You're welcome. <laughs> mm. So uh, in 23, now 23 is an interesting year that uh, happened here. It is our, our base, uh, what our target revenue uh, uh, was, Looking at is to generate six million ninety two thousand, uh, based upon the budget that uh, was appropriated, and what uh, drove that uh, number down, uh, both in our estimate and our uh, recap was twenty two, was a wet year, and so we didn't use as much MWRA water, so our assessment from the MWRA went down. So the amount that we had to raise uh, ended up being less. But even at that, because you know, this is the comparison, look at the 23, the amount $6,008,087. Looking at the actual in 2022, this is a rule that we can't see. The Department of Revenue, and this is the same, will not allow you to estimate no matter what you're saying you think you're going to generate more than what you collected in the prior year because that's a sign of what they assume okay you collect, that's what you collected that's the worst case scenario that's how they try to keep communities out of financial trouble um by uh looking at in other words then voting to raise rates now need them uh, although we did do that freeze and COVID, they're not raising rates. Edom has adjusted rates. There are communities that don't. And then they run up these big <clears throat> deficits and get into the financial trouble where the state actually has to get involved. That's why that practice. You're referring to 7.428. 7 right? On page 49. Um, on page 49, I'm, 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 uh, at the very top right now, I'm just comparing revenue to revenue. Yeah. Why my revenue estimate of uh, of six million eighty four thousand, which is compared to what the maximum I could estimate was six million eighty five thousand. Those were the budgeted amounts, 
So we had a shortfall of $284,721. Yes, sir. Had no retained earnings to use. That's that that's what the property tax was required to contribute to the enterprise fund in FY23 of 284721 dollars Lo and behold, and this is the volatility, FY23, we had that hot summer, we had a boom in revenue. $7.4 million was generated uh, on, on other service fees and stuff actually was down, but that was clearly irrigation that was driving that. So we had a great increase. Our uh, expenses uh, came in 300,000 under, so that was a $1.4 million surplus. And, uh, and that's the good thing. The return to earning the surplus, that's the enterprise funds. Fund. Yes, that's the, the enterprise fund. enterprise funds. Uh, Free cash, it's retained earnings. And again, it's price to think more like a, a, a company. Yeah. That's that's exactly what it means. So retained earnings. Yeah. All right. So what do we want to see for um next meeting? Next meeting. Increase in the water quarterly base rate. What do you think is a reasonable number to use i think you've got to strike some balance between four and two with step change increases and your base three increase you're talking about options number yeah okay the water yeah. four and one or two using that as a basis to yeah. apply changes yeah. right yeah so you can moderate your step change increase and keep the four dollar increase for the annual service fee Agree. So the okay, so annual service fee going from you could go to like one percent pro or I didn't sorry, yes, annual service fee of four about four hour increase. So it'd go from sixty to sixty-four. That would be the end. Currently you pay a sixty, so that would be yeah. sixty to sixty-four and do that. Okay, and then on the sewer. Okay, so are there any other scenarios that anybody would love to see on the water? Well, conceptually, while well, irrig irrigation is, is harder to predict and less reliable, it does feel like if you're going to increase base rates, you should increase your irrigation, your secondary rates as well. At least that's how I think about it. In every scenario, we do increase the secondary. Right, so okay, they're just not by a disproportionate amount. Yeah. Okay, yes, all right, yeah. okay. The one thing and that's part of that four dollar year increase also is applicable to the second meter fee as well. Oh, got it, it's yeah. four dollars per yeah. yeah. Okay, so that that's the additional scenario for water, yeah. Um. Yeah, I think option seven is logically the logic makes sense to me, but yeah. I think we potentially you know, see the base rate adjustment also. Okay. So uh again, when you're saying base rate, are you talking the sort of base uh, sort of the twelve dollar okay. quarter yeah. fee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think that would place a gap. Again, go from 48 to 52. 52. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other scenarios? I'm not a fan of flat rate of the rarity flags. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you have a lot of options beyond some seven varietal. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing looks great. 
I can do that. I'll take that, um, do a couple of variations on those as well. Uh, like I said, I'm still wrapping my head around the whole budgeting process. And see where we it. And so for option seven, it's it's tethered to the that leads to be tethered to the NBT or sorry, not NBT, uh, NWRA. So I'm picking the correct result. So assessment increased. How much it, 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 the maximum permitted amount would be for the sewer option seven would be hypothetically 101.5 percent. That's maximum. To the rent. Well, th that's how we figure do we yeah. have a good a rent structure that's defendable? Because again, we're yeah. using an average in terms of cost assumption. Um, so if that's been our methodology, there's no law that says that. Yeah. It's just our approach. Yeah. Because I'm just saying, because as of the data printing, 101.5% of this number for option seven, that wouldn't, once again, going back to the same, because of the current shortfall, it still would not translate in real time to 101.5, if you follow what I'm saying. Do you, do you know what I mean? Uh, because of the yes, underperformance yes. in fiscal 24, Bringing this number up to uh, an option seven to one hundred one point five percent, realistically, if we were to transfer or, or, or kind of layer in fiscal twenty four, it'd still be below that. Okay. Is there a way to kind of triangulate and include more of fiscal twenty four, just as a side analysis, I get a better picture. I, well, I can do that approach on our six um, on the six months of data because I don't have the data. Sure. Uh, I don't even have the data from the third quarter. Um, so I can try to do a metrics uh, I do a metrics with twenty four data for six months with the other six months of comparison sure. to annualize it for, which would have a lower assumed billable volume, which would require even higher rate to meet our target. Because our the one number we do know is what our target is. Yeah. And that's the number. So dropping the billable volume estimate is going to increase what the rates need to be at each step, to generate the same amount of money. Right. It just, it just seems like this year more than the last few years, it's more important, in my opinion, to take account of the current fiscal year to date than the previous fiscal years to date. And I and I, I agree because with we're you. gonna be in the same position then next year because I agree with you because the trend had had this not been a trend that's been uh, consumption's been declining each year. I would have suggested the committee maybe we do take a wait and see, but the trend. The trend is there. We're using less water. Uh, there is the volatility with the irrigation, but other than that, in the trend on billable sewers decline, that's I don't see anything magical that's kind of going to replace that. Even with the hope that children's is going to generate some extra usage, there's still another year away before they're going to come to yeah, that. I've asked before. I know you said that we're that we're legally permitted or yeah. prohibited from including that. Yes, I remember that. Yes, if if that's going to be the reality, do we not have to revisit operating expenses? Well, your operating expenses, you really if that if it goes through the exercise in terms of the review of the finance committee and town meeting and voting and see basic operations. Uh, I mean, with the eleven million dollars, you have to pay eight million to the MWRA. That's not a choice. Your debt, you don't have a choice. You have to pay the debt. The and I mean, it's not really the purview of this committee, though. No, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. But but the point is, your not, hands are tied. Your yeah. work, your work is not disappearing. It's just like uh, what I said uh, at the last meeting. The most expensive gallon of water to deliver is the first gallon. Yeah. So we have to have yeah. the whole infrastructure. The whole infrastructure has to be up and running. Yeah. But we're not allowed to charge the most for the first gallon. Yeah. You have to charge for the last gallon. So when you conserve, we have a greater hit in revenue. And that's basically what happened with Coca Cola. So uh, there is some decreases, which is reflected in the budget, is. Uh, if we're not pumping as much water, we're not using as much chemicals yeah. and we're not using as much electricity. So there is that amount, but it's, it doesn't translate into big numbers. And in fact, the, the budgetary outside of the 
uh, MWRA assessment, the budgetary increases haven't been significant uh, from year to year. It's well below CPI. Um, and that's even with us trying to contain with the 30% increases in, in the drinking water chemicals over the last few years yeah. in the cost of the infrastructure parts, meters, pipes, connectors, anything yeah. metal, all is increased significantly. Yeah. Head count just not enough to do much with. Yeah. Okay. I agree on that. Plan. Okay. So, fine. We'll have information. Probably be the same thing. It'll be you know, get it on Memorial Day. Uh, okay, so I have another week from today. That's a week from. No, no, no. What's our next meeting? It's not uh, next, next, next Wednesday, right? Next Wednesday. Okay, so I have a problem with that. That's it. Uh, that I'm not going to be able to attend. Yeah. We'll attend remotely. It's going to be kind of tough. Um, so I guess the question is, can the committee move forward with the meeting without, can we designate? Yes, we can designate another uh, member to be chair, acting chair. Okay. So. <laughs> um, so let's just go on longevity. Right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Acting chair. Yeah. Acting. Yes. Acting. Uh, now my daughter's graduating, so we have a bunch of graduates. Well, she's not graduating on Wednesday, but there's a lot of things going with it. Yeah. Lot going on. So, uh, all right. I appreciate that. So, do we need to formalize that or? Uh, well, the, uh, just to get the sense of the, that the committee I would have uh, uh, any have objections. No, no. Okay. Need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good stuff. Thank you.